This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle by StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your own freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on, guys? So kind of a laid-back video today. I'm actually updating my Mernstack course, so I didn't have time to create a project. However, a lot of you guys seem to like these types of videos. Uh, but in this one, I just want to talk a little bit about getting stressed out and overwhelmed over the amount of technologies that are used in web development because oftentimes it seems like something new is coming out every day, things are getting updated, and you need to learn everything. Um, and, and this is, it seems like this for a lot of experienced developers. So I could just imagine newcomers, people that are just getting into uh, web development, how they feel. So I want to kind of address that for, for those of you that are, are new to this stuff. Um, but the bottom line is you don't need to learn everything. You're going to see a lot of technologies thrown at you, even from my own channel. But you don't need to learn everything. You want to, first of all, pick a path that you want to take. You know, do you want to be a front end developer and deal mostly with the user interface, which will be a lot of HTML, CSS, uh, probably a front end JavaScript framework like React or Vue? Um, do you want to deal with the back end and the database and building APIs, microservices, things like that? Um, do you want to do DevOps? Do you want to do mobile development? Or do you want to do full stack development, which is probably what most of you want to do it seems to be the most popular that's the highest paid um, you know that's that's what I like to specialize in so you know you want to pick your path and then decide what what uh, technologies you're gonna learn um, so as far as as picking your technologies you want to stick to a certain stack Okay, a stack that works well together. So an example would be like the Mern stack where you have Node.js, Express on the back end, uh, maybe another back end JavaScript framework. And then you have MongoDB for a database. Mongo goes really well with Node because it's very JavaScript like it's it's very scalable as well. Um, yeah, but it really depends on the project. You could also use a relational database. Um, and then, you know, a front end framework like React. So that's a, a, a good stack to work with. Um, you might go with something else that's not JavaScript, like let's say Python. You have uh, the Django or Flask framework. Probably go with a relational database like Postgres. Um, let's say maybe PHP Laravel with Vue.js on the front end and MySQL as a database. So these are just some examples of some stacks that you might want to look at. Um, and a lot of you probably uh, know that I have a video that I put out every year called uh, Practical Guide to Web Development. And I give you all the examples of the different back end frameworks, the different languages, front end frameworks, all that stuff. So you might want to check that out if you haven't. But it is overwhelming because there's just so much. I think there's like 60 technologies or something um, in those videos. So it, it can get really overwhelming. But like I said, you want to stick to a certain range of technologies. And it does seem like when you go on, you know, even my own channel or other channels or other educational outlets, that all this stuff is being thrown at you and you're supposed to learn it. Now, my channel is not meant to be a guide for one certain type of developer. And it's the same with everybody else's, with, with most channels and uh, course, course outlets and stuff like that. It's just to give different people different options, right? So it's not like every video I come out with, you're supposed to learn that thing. And, and some people, I can tell that they think that because they get frustrated. They start to leave comments like, you know, why do I have to learn this now and this? Um, you don't. It's just it's there for people that want to learn it. Um, it's it's not a guide for a single developer. So just keep that in mind. Um, another thing to to realize is that a lot of the new stuff, like uh, let's say WebAssembly, for example, which is pretty new, um, you'll see a lot of content on this new stuff as far as YouTube and courses. However, it's not it's not really being used yet in the real world because it's so new. Existing businesses aren't going to, um, they're not going to take the risk to use these brand new technologies just yet. So don't think that everyone is using this stuff just because you see it online. The reason that it's all over the place online is because it's brand new and there's not a lot of educational content on it yet. So as content creators, we want to 
explore these these new technologies and teach them. Um, now, it, it, that's not to say you can't learn them. I like to learn new things just just to learn them. Um, but it's not stuff you need to know. So, so try to keep that in mind. Um, the amount of technologies you see online is not the amount of technologies that are really popular and being used in, in the industry. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is you don't have to remember everything. So in terms of code, you know, I think a lot of people that are new think that they're supposed to remember like all the syntax to every language and every framework and so on. And that's so far from the truth. When you watch tutorials and courses, it seems like it's nice and smooth. But when we create those projects, even the small ones, uh, I do a lot of research, whether it's Googling or looking on Stack Overflow or in the documentation, watching other tutorials. I'm constantly doing research. And, and that's just part of being a web developer. I think that's actually a skill in itself is searching for problems or solutions or, or whatever. Um, so, you know, you, you don't have to remember everything. And when it comes to supplemental uh, technologies, like let's say Git or SSH or FTP, whatever it may be, just these, these kind of side technologies that you need to know, but they're not, it's, it doesn't take as much time to learn as like a language. You, you don't have to learn, you don't have to master them. So let's use Git as an example. You don't have to master it. You just want to learn um, the, the basic commands that are pretty much 95% of what you're going to do with Git, which is, you know, pull from a remote repository, um, add to your local repository, push to a remote repository, um, things like that, you know, create branches. Uh, I actually have a 30 minute Git crash course that and what you watch in that crash course is what you'll be doing 95% of the time. Now, later on down the line, you're going to run into some issues with conflicts and you'll have to have to kind of learn a little more then. But to begin with, you don't need to master it. You, you just need to know um, the most common tasks and commands and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that's that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. When it comes to picking a technology like let's use a JavaScript framework for example we have the big three which are Angular, Vue, and React. Uh, don't stress too much about which one you pick right because you see a lot of videos that are like React versus Angular, Vue versus React and I used to create these videos but I stopped because they're not they're not helpful they really aren't um, it is important to do a little research but to watch like 10 20 videos about one framework versus another it's wasting your time what you want to do is just do a little research and then pick one and, and dive in you know and, and start to learn watch tutorials and courses uh, build projects rather than watching these stupid comparison videos um, because I'm telling you once you really learn, like let's say React and Redux, if you learn that really well and you understand um, state management, you understand component encapsulation and stuff like that, you'll be able to learn Vue or Angular in no time. And even if you're a React developer and, and React goes down the tubes, which I don't, I don't think it will, but I'm just saying if it did, and then let's say you got offered a Vue job, you could learn Vue.js in no time because you already understand those, those fundamental, fundamental principles um, of React and Redux. And the same goes for a language. You know, people ask me all the time, how do you know all these frameworks and languages? And the answer is they're, they're very, very similar. They just have a different syntax. They have diff some different structures and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of the control structures, the data structures, a lot of them are the same. Um, they're just, it's different syntax and it's, um, uh, certain things are named differently. So like in Python, you have dictionaries, which are almost identical to object literals in JavaScript or hashes in Ruby. So they're just called different things. Um, once you learn one language, it's easier to learn a second and then a third, fourth and whatever. Um, same with frameworks, same with different libraries that that that, uh, that are similar. So um, I, I think that's pretty much it, guys. I don't want to I don't want to make this video too long. But the, the bottom line is just to relax. Don't don't go nuts over which framework or which language. As long as it's fairly relevant, you're going to be fine and you'll be able to pick up other stuff along the way. Uh, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and I'll see you next time.
Hey guys, one of the best, if not the best resource I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing. The creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it. You get a 130 page guide to freelancing and it comes with things like invoice templates, client proposals, HTML and CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community and much more. So use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off today.